It's rained really hard last night. And uh, what I want to show you up here besides my goats playing and grazing is where we plowed. <clears throat> That's contour plowing. Perfect, virtually perfect contour plowing. And so here all you really see is a thin brown line because I'm below it. Uh, there's three lands, is the old-fashioned word for it, that were plowed. The third one, <clears throat> you can't really even quite see. It's above the highest of the goats. But I'll, I'll film it from up above, uh, or, or as I go up the hill, you'll, it'll look very different. Another thing, it, here you could almost imagine that the lines are straight. Well, if we get up, you'll see how curvy they really are. Related to that plowing is this ditch digging. Um, this is a uh, an old ditch that I'm, I'm cleaning out, and <clears throat> the, the dips, these gullies, are not from bad agriculture, they're from mining. That's where the miners followed veins of ore uh, up, up the slope. And, uh, and this water, I mean, you can see the water tends to go toward those gullies, but it, I spread it out. And then that's the line that I use to guide my plowing. Now, as I go up, I'll, I'll lengthen that just a little bit, although the grounds begin to get a little tougher and harder. Well, you can see by where it's muddy where I just took the glebe, uh, glebes out, I think is the right word for them. Here's a, this is a glebe, right there's a glebe. It's what a shovel will cut. And uh, th as I say, this isn't new. Once that water finds its way into that older ditch, which you may or may not be able to see, it'll, it'll It'll keep slowly going out that way, and that spreads the water out and prevents it from washing, making these into true gullies. And what I've been doing is working on either end right now. Now later in the year, this field could get looking like the surface of the moon because the soil is so poor. But the one thing I can do is make sure it, it has water as long as I can get the water there, spread out to where it's needed, and not just not just going down through. See, you can you can see that the, the water's heading out. Oh, and I've said this other times, but it doesn't hurt to say it again and again. The way you do this is you cut there, and you cut there, and you cut here, and lift that glebe out. And then if the water runs into it, you know you didn't go uphill. If the water runs in and then runs out, well, then you know you went downhill. And by doing that, you can keep this edge really within a, a, probably a half inch of, of true level. You don't, you don't need a transit. Well, I'm going to go up and see if the heavy rain damaged the plow. This is the next ditch up. Right down there is where I was. This is the next ditch up, and this one's new. I started that uh, this uh, just a week or two ago. And as, as I intercept the water coming down through the the mined gully you can see that the, the grass is higher and thicker there also probably less palatable but when you get out here into the high ground the soil is so thin uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm leading water from there out to here but this is getting to be too late to do this easily because the grounds already starting to get really hard um, Oh, what I wanted to tell you. Oh, when I lift the glebes out, here once again, here's a glebe. L G L E B E, I think is the right word for it. I always set them with the roots down and the grass up. It's tempting to flip them over like a plow would do, but I don't. I lift them and set them down. I think it's better. And you can see how I added where it's muddy. That's where I have added. And here you can see also where the water is coming, working its way down from the hill and from the aqueduct, which is where we're headed in a little. But I've got a couple more ditches to adjust. There's the other side of that same ditch that I was just on. And you can see the water has run in, but stopped, which means that that's perfectly level. Uh, I could go on working at this, but, uh, but, and once again, you can see over here, the ground gets thin. Moisture's not the whole answer here, but it's probably the single biggest factor. Well, I'm just talking, why don't we walk up and see the next ditch, I guess. I, this is also a new one. 
uh, I started that this year. So I'll add on to it a little bit. You can't do the if there's if the ditches are empty, you can't really do this. Then you'd have to use a transit or something. Working my way up through here, you can see that gradually I'm establishing the lines of terraces. Uh, one, two, well there's one down there that I didn't work on yet, an old one. Uh, and the further up I go, the more water is available because each one of these tends to spread the water out and slow it on its way down. I wanted to say that this technology was available and very well understood to the ancient Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the ancient Chinese, the Peruvians, the, uh, oh, what's that valley in India, like the Punjab. It was very well understood, this kind of hydraulic engineering. The Romans, of course, by that time they were using a, a, like a transit, like their version of a transit. Oh, and still one other thing I wanted to be sure to tell you is I'm going to give you a link to something I did about two or maybe three years ago where I took a, a lawn and I contour gardened in that lawn. And uh, I put that online, uh, contour gardening. And it's the same principle exactly, except since it was a lawn and had been mowed, you know, a riding mower had been mowed a lot, very rich soil. It was uh, easier to do, and I had a water supply, uh, so I could do it. You really have to have a water supply to do this. All right, I'm going to move on up. Now you can get an idea of just how curved this kind of contour plowing is. Uh, here's one of those uh, uh, mine, I don't know what to call them, I guess it's strip mines, what it is. And this is an old ditch, and you see it's filled with water. I, uh, it, that's the job that it does. Now back here I did clean it out some, and this was what we used as our guide as we plowed. Uh, as I recall, this one I didn't quite get right, so where I'm walking is just slightly higher than going out on the other side. There's reasons. I mean, it was hard at the start. I didn't quite get it right. Uh, so the water all tends to flow. It all tends to flow toward the south. But that's okay because that's the part that's the furthest away from the water supply. And then out here, I, I cleaned it enough so that it reached the old ditch. Now when I say old ditch, I probably did this 20, 25 years ago possibly. Uh, and uh, it's still there, you know, it, it was still available to, to use as a guide. And that is old hay that was no good. Uh, and it seems to me that that's going to be a good use for that, which is really too deep to, to plow across. But for mulching, uh, or a, uh, what do you call it, a compost heap in a way. I'm going to put the word out that any farmer who has old hay that's rotten, no good, he's going to burn it. Bring it here. I'll dump it in these. Well, the, uh, the plowing doesn't seem to have been damaged by that very hard rain. You can see where the animals have walked through, which is fine. And the oats that's on the surface, well, it didn't get buried. We didn't use a seed drill. We just used a drag harrow to cover the, uh, the seed. Um, all right, maybe I'll just keep plowing. I told you about that garden, and I will give you the link, the gardening. And there's a lot of water coming here. Uh, you know, too, it was hard to go across here because of this, because I, I was a little bit caught by surprise, but you see when it's plowed like this, even though the, 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 the land that was plowed is parallel, still the upper dead fur, it's called, acts like a irrigation ditch of its own. Uh, that's the plan. And as I say, going through here, it was a wonder sometimes that the tractor didn't get stuck. If I'd known with more in advance, I, I would have shut the water off before we did that plowing. So here, this was not plowed. This was just a matter of getting through and not getting stuck. But you can see that the water is being taken out, led out in each direction in the dead furrows. And even where the tractor almost got stuck, 
I don't mind these ruts because these ruts do the same thing. I can just pick that up and keep it going out. So little by little, I'm spreading the water. All right, now the aqueduct. I could shut this off, but this way you can be part of the excitement to see what it looks like after that heavy rain. The water's a little, not, not very muddy. That's surprising because that, that ground was just so recently dug up. It was just over, just over a week ago that that aqueduct was, was born. And here is where I adjusted this to be able to catch this old uh, for a, or ditch, rather ditch. And see, I'll clean that out right there at that high spot. And then that water's gone the whole way, actually it's gone the whole way out there past where the horse is, around the hilltop, and come back on the other side, or the other direction, because it was completely level. All right, now, <laughs> the aqueduct. Well, it's reached the pipe. That, that, that's, uh, that pipe, the buried pipe, as I showed elsewhere, goes out to a hole in between those two pallets, which will act like a, a sort of a well, and there I'll put a small, real small windmill to lift the water the rest of the way to the top. Uh, now, I wondered if... <laughs> I mean, I'm just filming. I figure, why not? I could stop, but why not? This way you can share the, the news as it happens. Here I also adjusted it so that water that it see eventually I'll let the water out up there when I know it's high enough I'll let it out and then start ditches around on either side uh, to, to ring the hilltop again but that takes a certain amount of cleaning out one thing I wanted to be sure to show you was that this has already been uh, colonized I don't mean the plants I mean the frogs uh, frogs eggs and they they hatched out here they are see they've hatched out already I think you can probably see that when they start swimming around the frogs eggs have hatched out this water is unusually warm because it's out in the sun now let me go back up on the wall of my aqueduct And the water is still falling, so the aqueduct will go higher. This I explained elsewhere, I call this mini, mini falls, now it's mini aqueduct. But wherever there's ripples, and it's not falling very much, but wherever there's ripples, that's evidence that there's a fall. Those are called hydraulic jumps, incidentally, there's a word for it. And here's a, here's a hydraulic jump as well, a little bit of a one, I think. Uh, so, you know, I'll go along and clean a little bit, but it's working. So just a little over a week later, like a, a week and two or three days, this aqueduct is filled. Now, if I shut that off, I have run water out around back to the woods. So really, I, I, I suppose I could still get maybe, oh, maybe three inches of height here. <laughs> if the aqueduct doesn't blow out a side, but I don't think it will. And from here now, you can see uh, the plowing. Three strips, quite narrow, on perfect contours. I don't care that the animals walk through there. They're welcome to. They're going to basically eat it anyway. It's for pasture. Uh, a lot of my reason for plowing is not to get the crop, but it's to improve the soil, but it's also to shape the soil. And I, one other word I'll give you, and maybe give you a link, is little by little, this kind of work develops into what are called in Portugal socalcos, S-O-C-A-L-C-O-S. And if you look up images for socalcos, you'll see, see that it impressed me for life, what I saw in Portugal. Now what they'll do often there is they'll include stones and of course rice patties too. Uh, I mean, they're all related. All right, maybe that's that's enough for today. Bye for now. I thought I'm back. I thought of one other thing I should maybe say in case I don't get.
back to the subject, but if you do look at the uh, the videos or the might even be a playlist called uh, Contour Gardening, well, I'll give you the link. But if you don't, don't uh, at least, or if you do, I wanted to tell you that that land has since been sold to a different family, and they are very, very good farmers, uh, gardeners. But they didn't use contour, uh, my contour ditching. They smoothed that all out and then gardened uh, in their own way, uh, but very well. And and my garden worked out that year, but two things that didn't help is that I was just ready to leave for Europe, and I was gone for, oh, it might have been 18 days, or at least two weeks. And during that time, a frost hit, and nobody covered my, all they would have had to do was just lay a little something over those tires, and it would have been protected from the frost, but nobody did that. So I had to replant. And then another thing, somebody thinking that they were doing me a favor, went through and weed whacked everything between the tires. Well, in the process, they cut my barley off, which I had planted in the ditches for, for later when they went dry. But it was enough that, uh, and another thing though, that was very, very good soil, uh, unlike this, which is, it, it would be possible to have worse soil, but but uh, it wouldn't wouldn't be easy because of all the mining. All right, maybe this time I am finished for today. You're gonna think I just never go away. Well, I keep thinking of things. I've walked up the abyss and there's the water supply. Uh, that, that heads out to the field, which you can sort of just see. And this, of course, dug just the way my ditches out in the field are. It was very crooked, but ab almost perfectly level. Anyway, I thought it was worth it to stop here. This is called Astrid Falls. If I open this up, I can open a hatch here, which is there. I can drop the water all of a sudden, which I plan to do, and put a a Pelton or uh, something like a Pelton wheel down there because this is a pretty good fall And I also wanted you to see how much water is actually going by Now this is in the springtime By August certainly by September that that will be dry And the bis that, that this is a bis levada Asequia Vala Wasserleitung it, uh, There's some other names I'm forgetting Anyway, that's what this is, and as I've said many times, I suppose, a, a technology known around the world, really, where fertile soil is dry and water is nearby, either from melting glaciers or a, a stream. It's a very logical thing to do, and extremely low environmentally. Well, the environmental impact is to make for more life. Oh, I can see right here, I'm losing. Uh, a bunch of water from the bis, so we'll walk up that far. So, oh, okay, it is blocked by leaves. Well, I was going to fix that anyway, but since I'm filming, since I'm filming, you'll get to see what's happened here. There's the blockage, and there's the leakage, quite a bit, really. Here you can see closer <coughs> how I'm losing that water. This bis is not perfect. Now I've opened the blockage, which was nothing, and and uh, and this should be done on a daily basis. And uh, I've said this. I feel I don't want to be like a broken record because I've said this in many other places. But the professional who does this, or the community designated community person, is called in in French, uh, Swiss French, uh, gardien de bis, guardian of the bis, or a valor. Just a little bit ago, I was telling you about that. <clears throat> Anyway, he various places he'll have trash racks, which need to gather the leaves and need to be cleaned. So he needs to walk them. What a pleasant job it seems to me. Well, I'm going to make no promise about uh, this being it for today. Who knows with me? I, you know what? I think I'll probably walk up to where I tap into the natural drain. And I'm back. I'm surprised. There's a major uh, leak. Uh, easy to fix but uh, it gives me an excuse to tell you something else too you know a very very hard rain like last night a gully washer they called it washed the stones down our lane it, it doesn't have too much of an effect on something like this because the bis leaks everywhere since it's so close to, to level it, it gets leaks all over the place and, and they're not terribly damaging now there's no dam involved 
There's no dam to break. It just it just taps. It, it just water when it gets too high spills over and heads on down. Uh, yeah. I'm standing in the natural drain. Uh, uh, unusual for me. I've actually come down here because I'm going to get a couple of rocks uh, to repair that. There's no loose soil available. But I wanted to show you. There's the mine face that that bisque goes along. You you basically wouldn't even know it was there. But it's perched on the face of an iron mine uh, from the old days. There. That stopped it. It doesn't take much. The May apples are coming up. That goes with uh, this time of year. That pipe, you don't, I don't really need it. Not now. Uh, and I, I'm going to take it out and, and use it as a penstock for there at uh, Astrid Falls to, to run a sort of a turbine if I can. Uh, but I think I've found a way that I can repair it and splice it, which makes all the difference. It's not very strong stuff, but, uh, but, I, but it, it'll make a real big difference if I can make it actually hold a certain amount of pressure. All right, here's the prise d'eau. Here's where I tap into the... Uh, Natural drain, Grandpa Jim Dam, I call this after my grandfather. And you see that this isn't actually a dam at all. All I do is it's a prise d'eau, it's a trap of water. Uh, and and I had used the pipe to go a little higher to get a little bit more of a head. Uh, so I'll take it out and bring it back if I need it. Same thing with that small pipe. Uh, I just there was an experiment. Well, now maybe I'm done pretty though, isn't it?